I will admit that when I initially saw a top-down action roguelite called Curse of the Dead Gods, complete with swords, bows, environmental hazards, and semi-random rewards based on what room you choose to enter next, my first thought was, hey, you know, this seems a bit like a Hades knockoff. It turns out I was completely wrong. Despite featuring a smorgasbord of clear influences from other roguelites, Curse of the Dead God stands out in that increasingly cryogenre thanks to some cool new ideas of its own. Its curse and corruption mechanics add an extra strategic layer to its already excellent reflex-heavy hack-and-slash combat by forcing you to make tough and meaningful decisions at every step of every adventure it takes you on. Curse of the Dead Gods doesn't do much in the way of storytelling, which is a bit of a bummer considering the way Hades has recently raised the bar for storytelling in roguelites, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Curse of the Dead Gods is its true focus, and it's so good that a thin plot is easily forgivable. All of the familiar roguelite mechanics that come with the territory are here. You fight your way through increasingly tough procedurally generated levels, collect new weapons and upgrades along the way, and when you reach the end, or die trying, you start your next run from scratch, except for permanently unlocked upgrades that make your next attempt just a little bit easier. But Curse of the Dead Gods does a number of interesting things to break from tradition. For one, instead of stacking all of its levels together, they're divided into three different temples for you to attempt to conquer in turn, each with their own set of devious traps, brutal bosses, and bloodthirsty enemies, like these godforsaken electric babies. Furthermore, instead of having you hopelessly attempt to beat a full temple right from the get-go, Curse of the Dead Gods eases you into its impressively challenging gauntlets by only giving you access to their first floors to start. This lets you mount some small victories and work your way up to the true roguelite experience of having to beat everything in one go. From those small victories, you'll gain crystal skulls and jade rings to purchase permanent upgrades, like powerful buffs called blessings, better starting weapons, shop inventory reroll tokens, and weapons that get added to the pool that can appear in future runs. It's a progression system that borrows a lot from the ideas that work brilliantly in Dead Cells, but there are a couple of factors working against it in the context of Curse of the Dead Gods. For one, Dead Cells system of adding new gear to the existing pool works great, partly because there's such a breadth of different types of weapons, items, and gadgets that can dramatically alter how you approach a run. In Curse of the Dead Gods, most of the weapons that you unlock are only slightly more interesting versions of the base weapons that may add elemental damage, critical hit chance, or damage scaling with a particular stat. There are definitely exceptions, but for the most part, I was never particularly excited about returning to the shop and adding new weapons to the pool because it felt like most of them didn't really matter. That said, even though the unlockable weapons aren't as exciting as they feel like they should be, even just the basic versions of the 10 different weapon classes are a ton of fun to use and have notable nuances that encourage different playstyles. Curse of the Dead God's combat is mechanically simple but impressively deep. Its backbone is its unique approach to stamina. The stamina meter is segmented into five chunks, with dodges, finishers, sub-weapon attacks, and heavy weapon attacks all costing a single stamina point to use. Once you're out of stamina, you'll have to wait about a second for it to start refilling again, which can feel like an eternity with how aggressive enemies tend to be. Crucially though, there are other ways to restore it. Every time you kill an enemy, you gain a point back. Whenever you perfectly time a dodge, you'll get a point back. And for the truly daring, if you time a parry to land just before an attack hits, you'll gain two points back, in addition to putting your attacker in a weakened state that causes your attacks to do more damage. That gives parries a really nice risk versus reward balance. Enemies are no pushovers either. While they have clear tells and give you plenty of time to react, the stamina system can make even the most basic baddies threatening if you exhaust yourself on offense and suddenly can't dodge an incoming attack. Deeper in each temple are also elite versions that hit harder, have more health, and have unique attack properties. Add that great variety of enemies together with an assortment of environmental hazards that can be turned around and used in your favor, a dynamic lighting mechanic that strongly encourages you to think about whether you're fighting in darkness or in light, and it's easy to see that there is a lot to Curse of the Dead Gods combat. But even with so much going on, it never feels overwhelming and always stays satisfying to execute, which is a credit to how naturally these different mechanics blend together. 
Appropriately, the biggest thing that sets Curse of the Dead Gods apart from so many other action roguelites are the actual curses of the actual dead gods. Alongside your life meter, there's a corruption meter that fills whenever you enter a new room, take darkness damage, or decide to buy an item with a blood offering as opposed to paying with gold. When the corruption bar fills up, you'll be burdened with a random curse that ranges from only slightly bothersome to the extremely annoying. These curses stay with you for the remainder of the run up to a max of five at a time, and can only be removed as a reward for beating a boss. On their own, curses typically aren't that bad. But if you let them pile up, the fifth and final curse is essentially a death sentence that rapidly drains your health to one HP. So you have to really consider whether it's worth taking on that extra corruption. There's a lot to think about before you even enter a level in Curse of the Dead Gods. Each level is tied to a specific reward, whether it be gold, a stat boosting relic, a new weapon, an upgrade to an existing weapon, or attribute points to your constitution, dexterity, or perception. Everything has a price, so I had to consider whether I should pass up a tangible reward in favor of collecting gold so I could afford the next shop, or whether I was able to spare the corruption cost of using a blood offering. It's very strategic in ways that favorably brought to mind deck building roguelikes such as Slay the Spire or Monster Train. It took me a little under 30 hours to beat the final boss for the first time, after which I unlocked a small handful of harder levels that I'm currently happily working my way through. There's not much of a reason to return to earlier levels outside of farming crystal skulls and jade rings in order to get that 100% completion, but it's worth mentioning that there are challenge runs that offer a ton of currency if you manage to beat their specially themed temples. You only get one attempt to do so per day though. They're neat diversions and offer a nice taste of the full temple experience even while you're still early on. Even without the curses themselves, Curse of the Dead Gods would be a standout roguelite with excellent combat, a smart structure that eases players into its difficulty, and a great variety of enemies, traps, and bosses across its three distinct temples. That strong foundation is only made better by the fun randomization curses bring to each run on top of the added strategic element that comes from having to balance the need to gear up quickly with the fear of taking on more corruption that you can handle. Its between run progression systems didn't do much to hook me compared to the simple drive to best its hardest challenges, but even without that carrot on a stick, Curse of the Dead Gods is a blessing in disguise. For more Curse of the Dead Gods, check out the first minutes of the game. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.